Ladies and gentlemen, we are back for another review for The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live, episode five. I know it's been a minute. For us, it's been a minute. For y'all, it seemed like it was just last week, but we're back at it. We're excited. We don't have the whole entire group here, but we promise for episode six, everybody will be back. But we'll go ahead and announce the people that are here. First up, from Three Black Geeks, Eris, what's going on, man? What's up? What's up? What's up? We back at it again. Episode five. One more to go. Back like we never left. Next up, we have got Busy Ron. What's up, Busy? Hey, what's up, guys? So I'm I'm excited to talk about this. I mean, I want to hear what Aries has to say because I know like he's ready to dive into this. But um, yeah, I'm excited. All right, yeah. Let's just unpack it because I mean, the thing about it, the last episode was such a high mark. I mean, with the nice writing the execution of the acting. I mean, there wasn't even that much. I mean, there was action, but it was very different. Like this one was more conditional per the storyline. It's moving the story forward. And again, we've only got one more episode left. So I didn't know what was going to happen. But what I got in this episode was very surprising. Um, Two different levels. One, we got the fact of rick and michonne really trying to reconnect and just having Mm -hmm. fun being themselves like rick's not constrained anymore michonne doesn't feel like she's a widow anymore like they're just being able to be yeah they back on that honeymoon phase i mean to see them kind of uh i mean i'm glad that they're kind of back together i mean we're, we're truly seeing that love the chemistry and all that through the screen and um you know I do like, I, I like it. You know, this is the first time we're seeing both of these characters be re- like truly vulnerable. They haven't seen each other in a while. So like, as we see, it's kind of, it, it's kind of compromising at times. Obviously when they're kind of linked up, they're like a crazy duo. But at the end of the day, I feel like there's been moments where, um, you know, we're like, okay, don't do this. Don't do this. You guys can wait to do this. And it, it feels a little compromising at times. So yeah. Um, yeah. Now, I think that's a really good point, Busy, because I think the crux of their relationship is like, is there ever going to be time? Like mm-hmm. you're in the middle of an apocalypse in and of itself. So, but Speaking there are time. times like in this episode, I'm like, are y'all really risking this for a drink mm-hmm. or oh, some ramen? Like, what, what are we doing? But Speaking we also know how capable they are as <laughs> fighters, as leaders. And so I, there was never a moment that I kind of felt like their lives were necessarily in jeopardy because they've dealt with so much worse. But I think when they got to um, the three people together, I was going to ask you guys perspective on that. How do you think they handled that? Like, do you feel like that was the best way that they handled it? It was a Rick and Michonne way of handling it. Or we've seen Rick in ways where he would just have slaughtered them. Without oh, for sure. Anything. And for Michonne, like she's evolved to a very interesting place now that she's a mother. Um, and I'm just, I don't know, just curious you guys' perspective on that whole, I mean, it was funny, but I also feel like it shows different pieces about who they are. Go ahead. Number one, um, this was me the entire, the entire time from the moment the episode started, I said, and go, because there is no way we're going to get all of this happiness happening mm-hmm. <laughs> like i'm like hmm going a little longer than normal exactly yeah okay i'm like eventually the other shoe is gonna drop i mean come on and yeah they go to sleep and there it is the plot shows up now to answer your question about how um <clears throat> you know how did that how did i like the way they handled finding the uh the three i like to call the three red shirts uh, for those of you that uh, for those of you that watch Star Trek, y'all know what I'm talking about. The three red shirts in the woods. Uh, I, I looked at this and I said, "Hmm, another day at the office." They've been so used to doing this, running into random people, not knowing f- well, you know, full and well whether or not with uh, they can trust them. You know, at the same time, the way that both Rick and Michonne went about it, it was more of, "Look, we just trying to go home." Yeah, we're just trying to go home. I don't. Uh, I did not have it on my vision board to kill anybody on the way home. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I just want to go home, see my kids. The man, you know, the guy that's been missing for like the last two years. I mean, sorry, the last six years plus. Finally got him back. I just want to go home. Right. That's it. To me, it was just. It was another Thursday afternoon. <laughs> Busy. Anything added up? 
I want to speak on that because I, I truly was hoping to be the first time I went to a group of random people and work out. Uh, it was just really funny the entire time because as soon as they interacted, I truly I knew things weren't going to work in their favor. But it was just so funny to see how calm and collected they were in that situation. And uh, yeah. I think for me, it was more like Rick, you know, him offering them, you know, the ramen at first and then kind of giving them a moment to process. And then, of course, them double crossing them. And the moment that they double crossed him and Rick was like, no, he's like, no, give me some forgiveness. Like, he's like, no. <laughs> I was like, is he just going to nonchalantly kill one of them? And just have them rest of them go. I, I I was really curious. I didn't know how they were gonna handle it, but it just kind of showed different dimensions of where they are. They very much so are so much at peace because they're with each other. Um, but I felt like they also made themselves very vulnerable, which was a great segue to the next scene. Cause the next moment, you know, they kind of go to this little area and they're trying to find certain little tokens, like Rick finds a little necklace with the M for Michonne and um, they find a little hatchet for a little JR, and um, okay. it was just interesting. That's what couples do. Like older couples, they go and when you leave to go on a honeymoon or you go on a trip, you go and try to find stuff for the kids, and then you go and try to find something for the spouse just in secret. So it 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 stacks up. But when they kept on talking about we're gonna go to this cabin, go to this cabin, they got to the cabin. And my man Rick Grimes trying to riz, you know, his wife up. Showing her the little necklace. She was like, what you trying to do? And sure enough, they ended up, you know, knocking boots. I was like, y'all trying to make another baby, bro. Like, this is not the time, bro. Really busy. <laughs> really busy. Um, but long story short, they find someone else that catches them with their pants down. Literally. And, of course, that is Jadis. Jadis tracked them down like no one else could. Or they had her looking like a horror movie character. You saw the way that she approached the the cabin with like all of the jackets on during the storm. It looked like she was like some horror movie killer. Jadis came at them on some Terminator mess right there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like there was something about the outfit. It was just mad funny. It, it looked like CW villain of the week. Bro, that doctor, was definitely bro. a CW villain of the week. Like the costume just reminded me of that like right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she she definitely had like extra extra armor, and I mean to be fair, it's really I mean look what she was going, look who look who she was after. <laughs> she made the right call. I mean, I don't even think an Iron Man suit would have saved her. Yeah, I mean the suit did not save her, but <laughs> it made sense <laughs> given the circumstance. It's funny, nah. She mm. she knows who she's messing with. I mean, she literally worked under Rick. She lost to Rick. She knows Rick isn't a joke. I mean, I'd wear. 30 pounds of gear plus more, dude. Like, I don't blame her. Yeah. But the she might have worn all that armor, but the one thing that was always exposed was her head. Yeah. Oh my god, bro. That haircut is something else. I am so glad <laughs> that that haircut would no longer be seen. Oh man, come on. I am no, I yeah, am so her, her flowers. No, come I on. am not nah, so she, over. she is so good, bro. No, she's great, but I mm -mm, that haircut ain't it. I'm hoping, never I'm hoping it was like a uh, producer choice and not her choice. I really hope that was a producer choice. But but let's let's keep it a stack though. When has her hair been good, bro? When it was longer. When it was longer, it fit between her. season nine and five. Uh, season nine, episode one, and episode five, we and had a weird because we only had a year no, time period. No, then. no, no. You want to know? You want to know when it was actually good? When she was somewhat normal after the the Negan's arc was done. That's what I'm saying. That's that season nine, yeah. episode, five, episode five of that season, because she everyone was different for that five episodes due to the fact that we jumped oh, a year between season eight and season nine. Season nine picks up pretty sure, uh, uh, like all the haircuts are different. Everyone's supposed to look different. Yeah. Um, and that's when you see that what's her name? Um, you know who I'm talking about. That I totally forgot what I'm talking about. Zaytus. Yeah, that's when you see that's when you see Jadis with the hair longer and normal compared to the because her bangs had stopped. Her bangs were bad and then she had longer hair on the side. The bangs were in it. Dog, y'all are killing me right now. All right. Hey, we Sam. gotta do this. We gotta do this. You hey, gonna Sam. Say trash lady. That's what it was, y'all. Hey. Yeah, that's that's hey, what Sam. I'm saying. Hey Sam, it starts. 
<laughs> the infection. Um, crazy, no, bro. I think that's a good segue, though, Busy. Um, because this episode was a lot about Jadis. I mean, of course, we know the end of the episode. She definitely expired. But it's how she got there <laughs> that I didn't expect. Why expired? Why why you why you have to say expired? Because it's been like a countdown. They started it with a scene. Oh, I thought you were talking about like how she died. Yeah, but I'm saying like it was almost like it was leading. Oh, yeah, that. okay, okay, yeah, my fault. We, <laughs> yeah. Just, the way that they kind of wrote it, they showed Father Gabriel first, the very first person yeah. in the episode. That threw me off. And he like, you know, he was praying, and then all of a sudden, like he got attacked, and then he sees and looks up and sees the helicopter. We don't know what's going on. And then it shows three years later, like it was three years, years in the past. Like he's meeting with Jadis, and Jadis is conflicted. She wanted to talk with somebody, she talked to him. And in each year, they have been meeting each other up until the very last year, um, which we ultimately find out is the last year of her life. But way that she kind of spent it in the conversation with Rick and Michonne when she had him cornered was that, you know, I had to do something, somebody that I really cared about. And I had no choice. This is the choice that I kind of made. And it kind of made us feel like she may have killed him. That that last year episode was very int- that, well. That moment in the episode was really interesting because she was the most vulnerable she <laughs> was, and he was the most vulnerable because the each year he was like, "We're starving. We need help. I need to know what's going on. You haven't told me anything." To the point where they just literally are kissing and embracing each other, and it's it's interesting how they stretch his character out more. But they also give her a really good closure. And so I was curious mm-hmm. your perspective on Father Gabriel in this episode and his relationship with Jadis that ultimately leads to something later on in the episode. What would you guys so, take on? So at first I felt a little like um I felt like it was out of place because um I was like waiting, like they rumored a lot of different characters that we might be able to see here. I don't really expect the world beyond characters, but I mean, I thought maybe we'd see Althea <laughs> or Morgan, but like, honestly, it's just the fact that, that we didn't get like anyone that we thought we were going to get, we didn't get, it ended up being Gabriel who I just felt like it was a little different, but then I realized how much of a hold he really had on Jadis and then all those flashbacks kind of made sense in it. Was, it was cool. It was cool. I liked it. Yeah, uh, Aris, what about you? Take on Jadis and Father Gabe's relationship. I, I just laughed because you mentioned World Beyond. Anyway, um, <laughs> no, I, I figured if anybody would have any type of uh, a reason to show up, whether cameo or otherwise, it would be Gabriel because no one else really connected with Jadis besides Rick, <clears throat> you know, during the times that he. Uh, had his interactions with her. I mean, considering number one, he got kidnapped by uh, by Jadis and got betrayed by Jadis twice. Right. So having, I mean, having Gabriel showed up, yeah, it was like a little, a little uh, out there. But I'm like, hey, a lot of stuff happened within that six years that we never really got to see. We only saw it from the perspective of like maybe five characters at most throughout the main show, and to see it happen throughout. Uh, like this show, you know, through like through a character that we didn't get a chance to see it in the main show is, is pretty cool, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I agree with Eris. Um, again, I I've fallen off from The Walking Dead for a while, but I do remember, and I will forever pick on you until you finish it. Oh God, look, I'm at least doing this. I do remember their relationship enough. because it was a conflicted one. Like she's all, and, and she said it, like I've always had different sides of myself. I've always had to compromise. I've always lost out. I've lost everyone. And each time trying to pick up those pieces, she ultimately was disintegrating. Like she, she'd rather sacrifice everyone than to lose yet again. But it was like the relationship that she tied with Alexandra through Gabriel and through Rick was really felt because of those um, those flashbacks. I think the flashbacks helped out progress her ending and conclusion. Because honestly, if they hadn't really shown that and they kind of were like, okay, why didn't you just kill them right then and there? You make up this excuse that, oh no, I'm going to wait and I'm going to say thank you before I kill you so I don't have to kill your family. Like, no, like you're conflicted. And the fact of it brought her all the way to the point of death to admit it was fascinating because it showed a little bit of like 
the things that she's done. Like the way she set that <laughs> three people up, kind of cornered them after their, everything that happened and set them in line to get killed just to give herself some time and a distraction. I was like, yo, she's she's ruthless. And it's it's fascinating to see how much she's changed, but yet she's still the same. And I, I think that for me, I actually like the way that she went out. But I was going to ask you guys about like the chase scene. Like, Eris, you said there's been chase scenes in The Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. I, I don't recall that many. I remember Not them a lot. in All cars right. and running stuff over, but I've never seen like an actual Walking Dead like chasing, like somebody's chasing somebody else. We had one between okay. Morgan and Negan, right? No, really? hang on, hang on. Let me go down the list. Morgan you had Negan. one between Morgan and Negan. Oh, yeah. Had- I mean, not more. No, you had one between Rick Negan and, and Rick. Yeah, that's what I meant. Rick, you had the Rick yeah. and Negan one. You had the one where uh, Rick <laughs> Rick was chasing down that cop in season five when they were trying to find out where Bell oh, was. Oh, yeah, with Sitwell, Asian um, Sitwell. You had, yeah, that's what it was. And you uh, got his name. You also had um, the other chase. Um, God, who was it? Uh, oh, you had, uh, you had Rick and Daryl chasing after. Uh, one of the saviors when they were trying to get a hold of those guns, he was on like he was in a truck and they was chasing. They got on. Remember, they was chasing him on his bike. Oh, I don't remember, I that, remember one. that. That was that one, and that's what led to them fighting and the truck blowing up. Oh yeah. Uh, there was like there, you had that chase. You also had oh god, there wasn't. There was definitely another chase. Um, jeez. I'm trying to remember the other ones because they, they, they've definitely done uh, like a chase of some kind in Walking Dead before. Mm-hmm. Do we where do we rank this one up? at? I mean, the thing is about this one, this is more of an emotional one because like, like the moment that just got hit, more than that. axe in the side. I was like, yo, she might die low key. Like, she's gonna bleed out. Like, she's about to bleed. <laughs> oh, we like, got a bleeder. <laughs> he's gonna risk it all. Like, she's gonna have nothing left. So it's kind of like, how much damage is she gonna do to Rick and Michonne? It's kind of what I was kind of going at. But I don't know. We all think about the actual chasing, how they filmed it, how they shot it. Like, what did you guys think? I mean, it, it was okay to me. Um, it, it, for the it was, dead, I, I mean, good. a lot of TV chases like that. I mean, they're not gonna be anything special. It but was, it was still it was fine. It was good. I mean, I didn't expect anything crazy, but it was fun. No, nah, it was a good mini series chase. That's what that was. <laughs> that was a mini series chase. Yeah, because the only reason why I ask is because I think it would have been more interesting if you know, like she was like being tracked by them on foot and like putting different situations. They they were put in different compromised situations where they were going up and walking and having their merry time driving. And then she disabled their car and they had to go and track her down. I thought that that would have been more interesting than the chase scene. I, I felt like the chase scene was just unnecessary, but I think that they did a really good job from a cinematography standpoint. It was it was decent for The Walking Dead. Um, but it all goes to a head at the very end when basically she corners them. Like she corners them um, and basically kind of like, look, you don't have a choice. Either one you kill me and realistically they're gonna destroy alexandria and everyone else you love or i kill you and everybody gets protected and rick and michonne they kind of look at each other like eh, okay cool well how about this how about i have rick go back with you i leave and we call it even and michonne goes and tries to patch you up and <laughs> What did you how did you guys think it was actually gonna end? Do you guys think that Jadis was actually gonna live through this, or did you think that I didn't was- I didn't think she would necessarily die in this episode or die in general, but I totally expected it to go down like it did. I mean, obviously when Michonne was talking about it, she uh made it clear that she was gonna end up um yeah, well I mean Michonne made it clear that she was wasn't leaving the building. So I just assumed that, that it was just gonna go the way things always go, but um the fact that Michonne had to kind of stand up for Jadis and kill those walkers behind her and just was just doing things to try to prevent her death, even though she wanted to kill her death more than kill her more than anything, excuse me. It was just uh I don't know. I thought the whole scene was just nuts. But I didn't expect if anyone was gonna get hurt, it was gonna be Jadis. Simple enough. Yeah. Eric, so what was your take on the ending? Um I kind of saw it coming. 
like I ain't gonna lie. Like like I did <laughs> I did see uh Jada's getting take out coming. Um number one, Michonne was ten toes on business. Like, <laughs> she's like, look, you're gonna have to knock out <laughs> Michonne to stop her from killing her. I mean, come on, even Rick was like Really? I mean, do you gotta kill her? Can we at least maim her first? I mean, I want to at least find out where she hid the dossier, you know, before we actually kill her. So we do technically need to keep her alive. He was all about trying to keep her alive and not kill her yet. Now, the moment uh, Michonne decided, you know what? You're right. Um, Let's do that. I'll just go back, say that you never... You know, you never found me, and you'll leave Alexandria alone. And I'm like, y'all doing this way too smooth, way too clean. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. for real, like for real, Jadis, you're just gonna let Michonne just walk off to the left and <laughs> exit stage left, and you're more concerned with Rick uh, disarming himself instead of making sure that Michonne actually did walk out of the room, get in the car, and leave. But no, you didn't. So again. You brought this on yourself. Congratulations. You played yourself. So it's so it's interesting though, because the 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 plan was that Michonne was gonna be the person to patch her up. And then on top of that, Jadis did have a gun ready in the event that she gets double crossed. It's just at that point, you know, it goes back to the flashback where she had Father Gabriel dead to rights. She was ready to put him into the dirt. He had talked too much um and it was all about self-preservation but she couldn't do it like she actually ended up getting the ring that father gabriel had promised for rick from the bridge and she kept it and i think even more than that when she had the gun on rick and she had realized like she's bleeding out and she was she was bearing she, she she put all the cars out in the deck but i think that she was prepared to kind of just like I'm the common denominator that can die, but if I give them the dossier, they'll be able to make it out. She she cares about them, um, but she said it. She was like, I'm really trying to protect the homes that I built. The CRM is the home that I want to protect. You guys are the home I want to protect. And it's, I don't know, it's just sad because I feel like they could have handled it differently. I think they could have actually kept her alive. And I think that would have been more interesting, especially the way that the season is going. I don't feel like this is going to be a one and done season. I don't. I, I, I really I've, don't. I've said it, it from. I said it from episode one that this was never going to be just one season. It's. I know, but it's just one of those things you don't want to get your hopes up for. Oh, like, I'm about getting my hopes like, up, bro. For me, at least, I unless I hear a, like a confirmed thing, I don't trust anything. I don't trust anything. I don't trust it to be just one season. I don't. Yeah. Well, I mean, with Daryl Dixon, they they announced it a season two before season one even came out. Yeah, you know, I mean, this is fine. just—I feel like a different story. Yeah, yeah. It, I think. See, the, but but here's the th but busy. Here's the thing: they didn't announce Daryl or Dead City as oh three movies based on you know which turned out to be spinoffs. These were planned spinoffs, whereas Rick was supposed to have three movies. And you mean to tell me you're going to take the story off of three movies and condense them down into six? I know, movies? I know. Again, again, I think you're misunderstanding me. I'm not doubting your like like I'm not, I, like the facts are there i agree like i all the signs are pointing there but at the end of the day <laughs> some of these networks get let down yeah all these networks they don't it, there's no like like they will just drop something just for the hell of it i mean yeah. I don't if it would a, a busy real i mean real talk if this was netflix i totally agree with you but or fox, <laughs> or fox. Yes. fox would say or t oh, like, yeah. like <laughs> but you know, this is AMC. They know that this is their golden goose, despite it not really dropping as only dropping as many uh, golden eggs as no, of I late. Know, how about the actors, though? Even with the actors, bro, you give them enough. Listen, everybody's got a price. <laughs> I'm just saying, everybody's got a price. When Daryl, I mean, not Daryl. Sorry, when when um, like when Rick left the show, they gave Daryl twenty million. To finish out the rest of the series, you talking nine, ten, and eleven? Twenty million. Look, all I'm gonna say the reason twenty why, million dollar, twenty million dollar why, contract went to Norman Reed is after Andrew Lincoln left. The reason why I bring all this up 
is because Jadis would have been a very interesting character to connect Michonne and Rick with the inside perspective going into another season. I think that if she would have been kept alive, that would have been very interesting. I would have loved to see what she knows and what they're going to have to find out. Because at the end of the day, you know, in their interaction and everything that happened, like she did get bit. And, you know, she revealed to them how she really felt. She gave them the ring. Like she she was very much so the Jadis that we kind of know what's going on inside. And, in other words, and, she was Anne. Right. And, <laughs> and it was kind of just, it was, it was bittersweet. Um, but I kind of was like, the back of my head was like, man, you could have kept her alive and done something interesting. So it leads me to believe that Thorne is a character that's going to be the substitute for that. Like, oh, Thorne absolutely. Yeah, I you. know. I'm a little nervous. We're we're, um, we're we're back to playing that angle again of, oh, like, Thorne's one of them now. Or maybe she's not. Oh, thank yeah. you. Because it's, it's weird because there's so many years that went by. Because I kind of thought, I was worried that they were going to make Thorne a love interest for Rick. And like part of the reason why he was able to let go a little bit easier. Now, that's not to say that she don't have feelings for the man, but um, it is going to be interesting to finally find out what the CRM have under their belt. I'm my hedge and my bets, and you guys, I was curious what you guys think. Um, what do you guys think that they're keeping a secret? Do you think it's a cure? Do you think it's a way of life that's different than what we know? Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, well, considering that Kirkman never really, this is something new. Like the CRM was something that was new compared to the comics. Like the the only thing that we had as far as comics, um, the comics version was concerned, was just all of um, the Commonwealth, mm -hmm. which had their own army. This with the CRM was something that came into Walking Dead through both world beyond as well as um fear a little bit mm -hmm. now they did make an appearance here or there you know we kept seeing like the random helicopters and stuff throughout the main show but they never really let their presence be known until you like really saw them in between world beyond and and fear but ah uh, do i think that their massive secret weapon is a cure i don't think so because if that was the case they would have implemented that. I know, but like clearly and, something important, specifically and, with Thorn. And you and know? you know, like or what like or what could their big master plan like truly be? Like, do they have like the the um uh, I guess the one thing to bring back balance to the world or or somehow revive uh civilization again? Because we've seen it time and time again between various communities you know like we've seen it happen with alexandria the sanctuary woodbury the commonwealth commonwealth being the only one that's really actually made it stick as as, as long as they've been able to do it but you know you got a whole army that runs off of military rules and they're like 200k plus right so whatever it is i'm i'm holding out until i actually see it because I don't think the I don't think a, a cure. I'm, I would never, I would never think that that's what it is because, because even Robert Kirkman said that that was something that he never like really intended to ever put in the comics was, you know, an idea of a cure. The only reason why I bring it up is because I think about Thorn. Thorn, honestly, up until even after uh, what's the name died. And she kind of got indicted and she finally learned what it was. That was when she clicked. That was when she completely switched over sides. And it sounds like here in Jade, it's, it's the same exact thing. And I don't know why they would be this pressed to believe that what the CRM is, unless it's very important. And I, I can't think of anything else that if, if when you die, right, in this world, you immediately turn into a zombie. What if the case is you don't? You know what I'm saying? Like it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's got to be something big or weighty. And I think that the other part about it for me is that I really actually want Rick to stay with the CRM. That's a that's my personal perspective because I, I, as long as we get a reunion before that, bro, I just want that to be over and done with so I can 
soak it all in. Then we well, get, the, reason get want, the reason why I want him to be with the CRM because I feel like what the CRM is doing, if they were under better leadership that actually cared, mm-hmm. and it wasn't like this hierarchy system that's just so jaded. I think that with somebody like Rick, it could actually work. I think that they could actually really save the world if what they're saying or presuming is something that can really make a difference. And I, I'd rather see that story, even if it's him, Michonne, and the rest of the crew. I think that that would be a very interesting, with the Alexandria group merging in, that story would be a very interesting one to me. Um, even if they don't continue a second season of this and they just kind of find a way of, a CRM storyline. I think it would be really interesting, but that's just me. Um, what are you guys' final thoughts on the way that they kind of ended the episode? What are you guys' thoughts on the CRM? What's going to happen in the next episode? Final thoughts and rating. Um, I still want to see another Walking Dead Universe character. That's still something I really want. Um, but yeah, I think it was a decent overall episode. Uh, nothing crazy, but I enjoyed it. And uh, I think I'm going to give it a B plus. Okay. And Harris. Uh this one was this is what I like to call the other uh, calm before the storm uh episode where n- again not a whole lot of crazy stuff went down. We got one decent car chase. Um uh, we got again random red shirts that uh, that bit the dust. And <laughs> you know it's so bad that the only <laughs> even though I call them red shirts, one of the characters' name is Red. <laughs> so <laughs> Red with his red gun. <laughs> with a red gun, too. Oh so, you know, even with all of that, um, you know, you know, I, I was okay with with uh with Jadis's or Anne's story ending here. Um as far as as far as what you know is what's to come next, I'm looking forward to it. I really do hope that this I'm gonna call it season finale is you know is something that's really gonna like blow the doors off of all the other episodes because remember the first episode of this show started off real strong and i really hope that this last episode of the season ends very strong as well i'm giving it all i'm giving this uh this uh, this episode i'm giving it a b a solid b yeah um i'm, I'm around the same um i think i rated it like a b um i don't think it necessarily b minus it kind of Reminds me of like episode two to three um, as far as transition. It's not filler, but it's also important. But it also felt like um, like a regular Walking Dead intense episode, the calm right before you storm, like Eric said. Um, I'm more hyped about the sixth episode. I just, I don't want to put an expectation on like seeing a, a, another character or then, you know, seeing a reunion with the whole team. I, I really don't want that, honestly. I'd rather them continue this into another season and figure out where everybody else fits into. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, yeah, I'm I'm all the way hyped for a, a six episode, and I think this is a pretty decent episode moving forward. But yeah, so yeah, I don't have anything else to talk about. I think that's everything. Um, Ayers, where can everybody find your content, dude? Uh, you can find us straight up. Threeblackgeeks.com. Go there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Busy. All of our links. <laughs> you can find me. You can find me at Busy Baron everywhere. Busy reactions on Instagram. And more reviews over here. Busy, how you feeling, man? I'm great, bro. <laughs> I'm great. I'm great. Anyway, we're gonna go. Uh, <laughs> make sure you go and check out these guys' channels and websites and content. Um, if you want to see some of our reactions for different crap, um, go to Busy Braun. We got a lot of different stuff on his channel and on his TikTok. Um, he brought me out of reaction, retired, and um, Eric brought me out of retirement for Walking Dead. So I think- hey. hey, look, I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not celebrating yet until this. He's man- just doing a civil service. Listen, I'm trying, but I'm not <laughs> celebrating nothing until this man comes back to me and says. I finished all of season 11. How many episodes is that, Aaron? That is a solid 24 episodes, just like season 10, sir. You're crazy, bro. Look, you took the time to watch all of season 10. 
<laughs> you went back and finished season 10. You mean to tell me you're not going to go through season 11? It goes by so quick. Brad, listen to me. I'm going to tell you this from Sensei. These are not the all or nothing days. They are not back. <laughs> Don't go back to like the old school CW days where we went through like 24 episodes. Like I, I don't have the attention span to do shows <laughs> of anything. That's like three seasons for shows nowadays. Do one so, once a week. We'll have to schedule. I said to do one, do one episode a week. Keep it moving. 24 weeks and then come back to me <laughs> when you when you say 24 weeks, it sounds pretty pretty big, bro. It does, because right? it's one episode a week. Right. Hey, put it this we way. get that, hey, but hey, when you say no, it like that, no, 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 no. I say it like that, but guess what, busy? At least you ain't got to take a summer or a winter off from watching it. You know what? I'm gonna ask one question, and I'm gonna put the outro on this. Is it oh. worth it? Is it worth it? Yes. Yeah. If I was to tell you, no, Sam, listen to me. Listen to me, and I need you to hear me, my brother. In the year of our Lord, if I ever sat here and said, "I want you to watch." fear the walking dead from start to finish i would want you to take my walking dead fan card and rip it up in front of me oh can i have way- it no no i, I would want you to <laughs> busy I, i'm saying that because i want you to destroy it the way that fear ended was god awful thank god regular walking dead does not end like that are uh, you jinxing it you jinxing it I'm not. Ah! It's all right. Filing out the top of the world. I can see the skyline. Fitting my radius on the timeline.